You're watching Telecom TV from the second annual TIP Summit here in Santa Clara in Silicon Valley. And I'm joined now by Axel Kloberg of Deutsche Telekom and also the chairman of the Telecom Infra Project. Axel, good to talk to you again. Good to see you. First of all, TIP is a, is, is a very recent organisation and movement. This is the second summit you've, you've had. Um, tell me why TIP was founded. What, what was the whole point of founding TIP? Okay, yeah, indeed, uh, it's, a, it's a fresh uh, development. TIP was founded back at Mobile World Congress 2016. So, if we look at the situation that it, the telecoms are in, um, that's actually not a very comfortable situation. We're observing exponential traffic growth. Uh, with the exponential traffic growth, our production costs are growing. And at the same time, APU is actually flat, or in some markets, it's even declining. So that's a bad situation. I think we need more radical approaches uh, to uh, achieve capital efficiency. And um, now when it comes to more radical approaches, I would say we need exponential innovation as well to master that exponential traffic growth challenge. But to drive innovation, you need talent. And the challenge that the telcos are facing is we are not attractive enough for top talent coming from universities. Yeah, back in the 80s and early 90s, the telcos were still attractive. That was the time when mobile networks were built. And uh, that had changed over the 90s. The vendors became attractive. Over the 2000s, that shifted again. The internet companies are now um, so attractive that the top talent wants to go there. Or if they cannot get a job there, or they don't want to apply for such a big company, they want to join the startup or run their own startup. And um, with TIP, we are actually combining uh, these various groups into one organization. So we have telcos with the experience on the operational side, we have established vendors, we have startups, we have system integrators, and we have internet companies working together in the community-driven R&D approach to come up with new approaches for the telecom industry, how we would produce services for our customers moving forward. You've talked about the, the issues and problems as to why TIP was created, but it, it seems to me this is a very, very broad approach you're taking. It's almost industry-wide. Just, just, just what is the scope of the Telecom Infra project? Well, <laughs> indeed, the scope is the telecom infrastructure, and that is just uh, naturally quite a wide area, uh, going from access over uh, aggregation backhaul uh, into the core, reaching out to management, and uh, on the other end, uh, also even reaching the home network of the users, of, of our customers. So this is very broad, and there are various interests of the, uh, of the various drivers within TIP as well. And uh, for example, Facebook uh, is supporting TIP as they are following Connect the Unconnected. Yeah, they, they want to connect more people to the internet. Now, interesting enough, there are some commonalities between us as uh, operators in developed countries and Facebook's requirement for connecting the unconnected because uh, we want to uh, offer, uh, let's say, higher capacity networks for a price point meeting the expectations of our customers. We want to meet um, our customers' expectations on uh, using automation to give basically instantaneous reaction to customers. And uh, so it, it actually nicely comes together. But indeed, it is very broad. So how do you um, go about organizing the work you do? Do you do, 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 uh, segment this work and create the working groups? Indeed, we, we have uh, segmented the work in uh, so-called project groups within TIP. And uh, there's one fundamental principle within each project group, which is actually very important also in such a community-based R&D model, and that's the IPR policy. We basically have two uh, variants. Uh, we have, for example, the Open Cellular Project Group is using the royalty-free IPR scheme. So that's a classical open source uh, like uh, environment. Most of the other project groups are actually under RAND IPR regime. So that's a selection uh, the, the project group uh, makes uh, by the time it's chartered and approved by the board. And then each, members, uh, each member has to sign up for that project group accepting that IPR policy. And that, uh, that's truly important, I think, to offer RAND as an option uh, for our members bringing in their IPR 
uh, to offer them uh, protection and at the same time go for uh, such an open uh, community-based R&D uh, process. And, uh, well, looking around here at the TIP Summit, I think, yes, it, it really proves to work. And uh, we came from a, a very small first TIP Summit running in a cafeteria at uh, Facebook with a little bit less than 400 attendees to now an event with uh, 1,200 attendees and a full show floor. And uh, it seems to, uh, to work out. There's, a, there's a, a large area, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of project groups. We know, you know it can be expensive for companies to send employ, uh, engineers and employees to, to attend various standards groups and industry groups. I guess what I'm guess, getting at is, it, is there a concern of, of like an overlap of work or there's just too many different si silos of, of, of work development work? And how, how would you either, either collaborate with all these other groups or or, or prioritise, I guess, and say, well, maybe we'll, we'll reduce focus over there and we'll, we'll do this ourselves. Yeah, well, uh, this is indeed a, a difficult situation, especially for smaller companies, for smaller operators. Where should they focus their resources? Uh, and the question I receive quite often is, is TIP replacing traditional standardisation organisations? No, that is not the goal. But... Uh, uh, yes, in some areas we have to be faster than we are with existing standardization. But uh, the, the telecom industry is based on open, has to be based on open standards. If we are losing the global connectivity, that would be a nightmare. So that's a key part. Uh, it was a key part for uh, 4G. It, it is a key part for 5G, and uh, that's not going to change. Still, uh, we have some areas. Let's take the millimeter wave uh, project group as one example where we are uh, bringing together on one side uh, what Facebook had uh, developed in this space uh, in the unlicensed spectrum uh, with a mesh approach, uh, with uh, the economics we are bringing to the table from the DT side and some other uh, activities. We're doing joint standardization uh, towards IEEE, for example. And uh, it's a, for me, it's an almost perfect example how things uh, to working together are actually uh, providing a quicker result uh, also in standardization. One of the announcements you've, you've made at this summit was the um, announcement of new board members um, and there's three new telecom operators joining the board. So the, are, you, are you pleased that we're getting more operators um, at, at, at this board level and of interest? in, in Absolutely. The, uh, this is not a theoretical exercise. We want to bring these technologies into deployment. And who is deploying the technology? That's the operators. And so TIP was founded with uh, SK Telecom and Deutsche Telekom being the only operators on the board. We had Facebook. Uh, we have uh, Nokia and Intel on the board as well. And uh, I think looking at uh, TIP right from the start and looking at the first uh, one and a half years of TIP, we needed more operators driving things because each operator has a focus area as well. We, for example, from the DT, we are driving the millimeter wave together with Facebook. We have just launched a new project group on uh, AI and machine learning. We are driving together with Telefonica and we cannot support all the project groups either. And the same is true for the other operators as well, uh, whether it's BT uh, driving, for example, the uh, VRAN, uh, Frontal project group and the new uh, announced network slicing project group and all of us have their focus areas and uh, that, that's why this uh, broader board with more operators on board it, it's, it's really critical for the success of, t of TIP and um, my big goal for the next year is to actually get the technologies out of kind of the lab mode out of the proof of concepts into deployment because Yes, you can do lots of proof of concepts and don't prove anything with it. You need to get it into deployment. That's the only real proof. Great. Um, you, you covered about what, what you're bringing in. So is, is it a case of um, operators have common interests so we can, you can divide the work, you know, you specialize in this area, BT specialize in this area, Vodafone in this area, um, and you can all benefit as a community? The interesting piece is we're partially competing, but we have the same problem. We are sharing the same problem. We, all of us are, are observing the traffic growth 
uh, and all of us need to do something to actually produce in a more efficient way. So, uh, but this is nothing new for the industry. We have been collaborating in standardization for actually quite some time. When you look at the development of mobile networks, the operators were collaborating. Now, especially in standardization for mobile, there was a certain influence uh, uh, also from the vendors and uh, you need to find the right balance and I'm quite uh, happy that uh, we found a great balance within TIP and uh, we are uh, very much aligned in the board as well from the operator side. Can I move on to something that Deutsche Telekom is, is doing specifically with, with TIP, other operators are as well, but that's the, the TEKS. Um, you've got, I believe, two centres, Berlin and, and, and Bonn, with yes. these uh, acceleration centres. Can you explain what they are and, and how they benefit? Yeah, we are. Uh, we have just announced for Mobile World Congress Americas that we are also uh, launching the first TIP ecosystem acceleration centers. That's uh, behind the magic word, word TIC. Uh, so the the problem uh, addressed by TIC is actually um, how can you get startups focused on network infrastructure. Most of the startups are actually focused on applications, sexy applications, and that's where. Uh, people and venture capitalists also are investing a lot and that's where you see the unicorns typically and the problem is that telcos overall are difficult customers we have complex procurement processes uh, we have high requirements on the operations side and it's so difficult that uh, if you want to run a startup focused on network infrastructure you're approaching a couple of venture capitalists they will tell you I don't believe that can be successful because you won't get into those telcos and we want to break that cycle because uh, uh, we have to break it. Uh, I don't want to say that the innovation driven by the established vendors is, is not enough but you also have to bring in fresh ideas and, and the fresh mindset and that combination I think is very beneficial for the industry and uh, so one of the ideas behind TIP is let's open up the operators active within TIP as a target for startups working on the infrastructure. Let's help them as well to reach out to venture capitalists and uh, we are starting this uh, in Berlin uh, with the first round uh, of discussions with uh, venture capitalists actually taking place uh, next week Tuesday uh, and um, we are extending this then uh, to Bonn as a second location as well because when, when we look at the European geography, Berlin is obviously a little bit closer to the east and, uh, and Ber uh, Bonn is a little bit closer to the west. So I think that's a nice combination with also uh, DT's headquarter being in Bonn. <laughs> One of the new project groups that you've announced at the summit this year is the Artificial Intelligence and Applied Machine Learning Project Group. What is the thinking behind that? Why, why does TIP need to get involved in this area? Network management is one of the main problem areas for us as operators. And um, we, we all started to go uh, for new approaches using, for example, big data-based uh, event management systems. Uh, but the next part of the automation is also the automatic remediation and automatic fixing of problems as as far as you can. That's where AI uh, technologies play a key role. Now, it's interesting because uh, when you look at the internet companies, they have all invested for 10 years or 15 years a lot of uh, manpower into the, the automation of their production. That is not the same as what we are addressing here. So that, that's also the explanation. This was driven by two operators, Telefonica and DT, because we, we, we have a similar problem among the operators, but it's completely different from the problem an internet company has producing their services. And for me, it's great because this is the first example for an operator-driven uh, project group, uh, and um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Great, and I'll come on to my, my, my final question now, and that is, we, we exist for our customers, um, our customers who, who, who power and support our businesses. So. Can, can we link in the customer experience? I mean, what, what, is, what is TIP doing that will ultimately provide a better experience for our customers, whether consumers or enterprises? Yeah, when you look at uh, the use of uh, AI technologies in network management, we want to fix a problem 
which might uh, arise in our network before the customer actually discovers that there is a problem. Yeah, today a customer has to report a problem and then it takes some time. Sometimes we have to correlate uh, various customers reporting similar problems before we can actually fix it. And that has to change. The internet has, has changed relevance for our customers. It became life critical. There's no uh, phone call anymore if uh, the internet is not working. So we have to, to treat this differently and AI uh, plays a critical role here. Great. Axel, thank you very much indeed. It's a pleasure.